little stories about Minecraft will oftentimes go to Herobrine about how he lives and he's a lot more than just code. Honestly, I found the whole idea quite cliched by this point, but this raises the question. Have you ever wondered about the Endermen? Whether there might be some dark secrets about them? I mean, like, anyone who's played Minecraft by now is quite familiar with them. They can be hard to find in the overworld, but many have visited their home in the end. While, of course, they aren't hostile unless you look at them or attack them. For some reason, or rather this reason, quite a few people consider them to be friendly and actually like them. Personally, I found the things creepy and killed them whenever I could. They're based off the Slenderman after all. Well, being as strong as they are, regular players know that if you run into water right after you spawn, you run for the water. For some reason, Notch decided to code them with a fear of water. And whoever thought anything bad and whoever thought anything bad could happen in water, right? Well, water is the whole reason this mess started. I haven't even begun to attempt to start up my game since then. I was, I was playing in my regular world, a, a server that my friends and I had started. It was done through Amachi. We had plenty of houses built, a, a seemingly unlimited supply of diamond and gold, and the Ender Dragon was defeated. There really, there really wasn't much to do in the world anymore except for, well, get creative. My friends and I were creative enough, and we understood the game very well. Aaron was our redstone guy. If you needed anything powered, he found a way to build it or make it better than any tutorial ever could. Myself? I made the majority of the buildings. I even started working on a city. We have a few guys who would work on supplies, paintings, and harvesting, anything that really was needed. Lastly, we had a guy we call a Graham, nickname Graham Cracker. He did all the magical stuff, potions, enchanting, and really anything you needed. And he also had us build him a mob trap so he could well, get an outrageous amount of experience whenever he wanted to. Of course, we had the randoms who would join and occasionally troll. And sometimes we would have someone new join our group as well, a regular. Soon our Hamachi server turned into an actual server, and this kind of thing became more frequent. We had fought the Ender Dragon before, and we could definitely do it fairly qu well. We could definitely do it fairly quick. Aaron and I, Aaron and I, and the majority of the group would take out the crystals and fight the dragon. Graham, however, would stay underground, working up potions for the battle, and have the rest well delivered to us. He wasn't too fond of the Enderman either, as I recall. That's why he made us well, bring water buckets to the end. He had to stay in the middle of the water where Endermen couldn't get him, and that's where I got my whole idea from. One day, when I had nothing else to do, I decided to go on the server, and it had been about two weeks since the Ender Dragon has been beaten, and we hadn't really gone to the end since then. We had a little trap that was set up with torches and sand that would well, send anyone who walked into the end well, send anyone who walked into it to the end. But it was mostly just to make them panic. You know, fun with the noobs I guess. Well I had a great idea uh, of using the end to farm ender pearls, and I was planning on using Graham's idea with the buckets in order to do it. But on a massive scale. You see, I had this idea. I had every invention on, f well, I had every intention on floating to the end with help from my inventory editor and slash fly command. I started, and soon I started. Of course, this was the only time I was, well, using such things as I made sure our server was legit. However, I was the only person on and I figured that Everyone would have a good laugh when I flooded the home of the Enderman. As I started, well, going, a good portion of the floating island they called home was filling up quickly. You would hear them panic and teleport away every time they would get splashed, and an occasional scream from when they decided to go swimming for too long. 
it was amusing how determination to live a simple well determination to live a simple computer AI can be can give a being. As the rest of the island started to fill up, they became very crafty on their spawns, and many were going under the island and even on little ledges. But as soon as I saw them, I would they would quickly be slept, swept away by the water and fall into the void. I kept going until there was just a little square in the center, an obsidian platform that I spawned on. They were pushing each other uh, for what little precious space they had left, and they would fall off the platform into the void or something else <laughs> whenever they, well, ran out of room or one decided to get feisty. I made a few more trips around the island, filling up any spots I missed and finishing off any stragglers that I found until I found a comfy spot to sit on. One even had a spot buried into the ground in, well, trying to, well, you know, do whatever they were doing. I soon filled the tunnel up and flooded them out. This all took me until about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was happy I was able to finish by night's end. After I was sure that every spot was, well, dried up, I filled up the square and up into the center. Many Endermen could just swim until they heard a death screen or they fell or something, something else. Now, this continued until something very odd happened. A message flashed on my screen saying that, well, Minecraft ran out of memory and it shut out. I tried to load up the game again, and it turns out that my jar got corrupted. So, I uh, reinstalled all the files, including the world for another time. And then the game starts up without a hitch. I get back to the portal and hop in. This time, it's not the end that awaits me, but instead, a white, endless room. I, I can see all but just a faint glow around me. I walk forward thinking that it could be the end or something like a potion of blindness stopping me from seeing it. The faint globe of light is all I can see, and it's the only source of light in my room as well. The platform doesn't end for a few blocks though, and obsidian continues, shattering my hopes of this being the end. The obsidian floor keeps on going in all directions, so I follow a straight line and just walk. And sound to start. My footsteps and sound begun to start. My footsteps first, but then the sound of blocks being placed as I continue to go forward. The faint sound of the Enderman begins and increases. First, first just normal grunts, but then they start to sound as if they were agitated. The sounds become much more frequent and gets louder and louder as I continue to go on. Like there was a whole horde chasing me. But for some reason, they, they just refuse to catch me. I start to see purple pixels as they are teleporting themselves around me. Then it stops. A few seconds later, it's... A few steps later, one comes flying onto the screen, and then a death cam goes at full volume. This made me literally jump out of my chair and almost damn near broke my keyboard. Followed by silence. It doesn't start up again until I move the mouse. One more sound like a light grunt plays as if it was letting me know that they're still in the darkness, just out of sight. I go forward again, clicking my mouse, hoping to hit one of them, or a wall, or anything, or something. <sighs> the pattern starts over, the sound of pixels, and the scare. I, 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 I didn't stop moving though, and neither did they. It continues. Escape, alt 4, th th that didn't function. Unplugging the computer was out of the question as I, well, risked my equipment. As I kept going, I was hoping it would end. After about three minutes of the cycle, it does. I'm teleported for one last time, unable to move. The Enderman goes on screen and stares right into my eyes. Water surrounds the character and about after 20 seconds he begins to drown. You are dead is played in the background. <sighs> Enderman still looks with a stoic appearance, not even flinching as I move an inch. Five seconds later, the computer powers down without warning and I'm left in the dark. 
The next day, I send my friend, well, the file to word, world. They played a game without any flaws, gone to the end, and even got a few pearls. But from that point on, I just refused to. I don't even have the files on my computer anymore. Uh, I did a computer wipe on a hard drive. Minecraft became more than that game at night, and... It's a lot more than just simple AI controlling a few entities. Uh, definitely more than just a glitch. These games and entities form on our fears. They have fear of their own, and it's not wise to taunt them. They are aware, and they'll make sure you'll become aware of their presence, too. And that was... Why don't I really quickly just check, double check the title here. Um... And that was the scream of the end. It's a Minecraft creepypasta, and to be honest, I find these stories quite cliched. But I found this one to be a bit more tolerable than most I come across. This story had some interesting ideas. Now, it was great at the beginning, but then the middle got stale, to the point where I actually had to cut it down. It was literally a giant wall of text explaining how this guy covered the island in water and it made no sense it was incoherent it was hard to read and you guys probably will not be able to follow along too but nonetheless it was just a ball of text that kind of got boring i would recommend cutting that down to a short paragraph basically saying i went around doing this this and this and this Instead of explaining how you went to that square, and that square, and this square, and oh my gosh, it's Kardashians. The story's idea about expanding on the Enderman would have been nice if they talked about some more realistic things. And, you know, maybe expanding the mythos of it by maybe tapping into its Slenderman-related origins. That would have made more sense and could have been a possibility or even a mod that could have been attached to the game. The events described in this was not that scary. It would not make me stop playing Minecraft as they happened to me. It would be an interesting story to tell, and overall, I feel like the main character tends to overreact at the uh, sight and sound of the story or whatever happens in the game. It's not like someone died on screen or, you know... It just kind of sounds like one annoying night where you got killed by a bunch of Endermen. Overall, though, there's decent buildup. Um, the beginning's w written really well, and I like how this isn't another Hero Brines Alive story. In fact, it even pokes fun at it. So, to you, the writer of The Scream of the End, I would like to say, great idea, it wasn't fully realized, and... I would definitely try to put in um, more build-up and more scary things. Uh, one good way to do this is maybe introducing the idea that you're trying to present a little bit earlier in the story instead of it coming to one ultimate revelation. I may not be a writer, but I do understand basic story structure. If you hint or foreshadow something that is creepy, the audience will be creeped out. I guess that's all I really can say about the story. It is a gaming creepypasta. I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and if you will like to, you can uh, do whatever you want. I got other stories I'd read. And yeah, this has been your host, That Creepy Reading, signing off.